After 12 years of making videos, 2023 was finally the year where YouTube became my job. It only took me 3,000 videos. Clearly I was a natural. For those of you who don't know, I have been making YouTube videos for quite a while now. This isn't something that's just sort of happened over the last 12 months. This isn't the only channel I've ever had. And so I thought I wanted to go through the last 12 years in kind of a short sort of story to kind of tell you the whole history, the whole timeline of how I've got here. Ugh, and what a journey it's been, guys. Let me take you back all the way to 2011, where I started a YouTube channel at 12 years old called FIFA Tips 99 It's still live now, you can go watch it, but you'd be wasting your time, it's a load of crap. Where basically, as the name suggests, I was making FIFA videos, giving trading tips to people. Yeah, I basically stood my webcam on top of a screen and sort of filmed the screen. Just apology for the quality of this video, it doesn't look good. I don't know why it's taken me 12 years, honestly. After about six months of doing that, I decided that I didn't want to just make FIFA videos, I wanted to expand, I wanted to give the people what they wanted and start making a variety of different gaming videos. So I started a new channel called The Game Face HD. Game Face. Get your Game Face on. <laughs> Why I called it that, I've got no idea. It means absolutely nothing. And this is where I'd embark on a decade's worth of videos non-stop and still not manage to become a full-time YouTuber. It's quite impressive, really, isn't it? I initially started out making gaming videos from, you know, GTA, Minecraft, Call of Duty, FIFA, and then after a few years of virtually zero growth, I decided that I would probably just double down on the FIFA stuff. That seemed to be doing the best. Career mode was sort of the thing to do, it seems. So I just started making videos about that, and every series that would go by, I'd slowly begin to get slightly more viewers, you know, I'd started off getting a hundred viewers and then eventually managed to get to a point where I was getting several hundred viewers on each episode. I mean, nobody really cared about the videos, they weren't very good, barely anybody was commenting. If they did comment, it would be comments like, oh, why don't you sign Ronaldo? Oh, why are you not playing 4-4-2? So it wasn't exactly the most engaged of audiences that really loved what I was making. I mean, some of these gaming videos were taking me 10, 11, 12 hours to make. It was ridiculous. And then, you know, in the, in the early times, I was only uploading it to about 12 people. It was only after a few years that I started to get several hundred views on each episode. And I was buzzing about it, to be honest. I was like, get in, we're actually starting to build an audience here around something. But then FIFA 17 came out, and these series were actually starting to do quite well. And it got to the point during 2017 where... I had over 10,000 subscribers. I couldn't believe it. It just kept going up. And I was like, oh, this is going all right at this rate. You know, in 2040, I might be able to make, do this for a living when I'm 41. And I started to have a couple of successful career mode series back to back. I remember in particular, I think it was Juventus. There was a, a Sunderland one that did well. There was a Monaco one that did well. And I remember thinking, oh, these are getting thousands of views on each video. This is doing great. Like, we're starting to actually build something here. Or at least that's what I thought. After five years of making videos non-stop, I started to see a sort of decline in interest in career mode. It didn't seem like people were getting as interested. Maybe it was just my videos, I don't know, but I felt like generally people sort of moving away from gaming and FIFA videos towards putting themselves in front of the camera more often. So I decided to try that out a little bit. I did some football videos with my mates, which, you know, did all right, but it was tough to be able to sort of film in a field with your mates every week. You know, I, I couldn't really get those videos out on a regular basis. And so I just went back to making FIFA videos. And then came some big life changes. In October 2017, with about 14,000 subscribers, I decided to go off to uni for 19 days. But still went, still went. That's basically the same as a degree. For the brief period of time that I was at uni, I was still trying to make videos. You know, I was still trying to film in this sort of shared room that I had with my mate. and. It wasn't really working. Hey guys, it's Gameface here and welcome back to a little bit of a different video today. As you can see by the title, I'm going to be talking about uh, the reasons why I dropped out of university. I didn't feel comfortable in the environment of university. I just didn't feel like I was in the right place for the next three or four years of my life. And yeah, as much as I enjoyed, you know, freshers, good week and everything, once you've done freshers, you've sort of done uni. Leave at that point. That's my advice, kids. Role model. And so I'd sort of done freshers and then I was like, oh, I'm going to drop out. And then before I dropped out, my dog died, which was good of him, wasn't it? Just, yeah, you just die out of the blue. Brilliant. So I didn't even get to say goodbye to him. That was annoying. So I dropped out of uni. My dog died. It cost me a grand to drop out. It's fantastic. I mean, life's good. At least I don't have 50 grand worth of debt, though. So, positives. And so, yeah, I decided to drop out eventually. Now, what I haven't said is... I didn't actually drop out to pursue YouTube initially. I dropped out to try and pursue this startup business, which I haven't really spoke about on this channel before because you don't really care, let's face it. But while I was doing that, I was still making daily FIFA videos. And at the end of the 18 months that I'd spent on this startup business, I kind of just decided, yeah, I just want to pursue 
YouTube actually. I don't really want to be a manager of a company managing people. Not really what I care about to be honest. Oh, oh, pay, pay us more. No, I want to make stuff. I want to get creative. Go speak to HR, Liz. Don't really want to do any of that. I just want to make stuff. And I like making YouTube videos, so I just went with that. And I started to see people making more like reaction videos, commentary videos, that kind of thing. And I thought, well, maybe this is an opportunity to sort of get my personality out there a bit more, which I couldn't really do in the FIFA videos. They're a bit bland, a bit boring. And I thought, well, I might give that a go, see if I can, you know, do that. And I saw that there was football YouTuber Mark Goldbridge. He was starting to go viral on Twitter at the time. For God's sake, go. who's that? Bloody Rick Arlison. Yep. It's like a bloody repeat. It's like UK gold. And I thought, hmm, there's a gap in the market here. He's going viral on Twitter, but no one's really talking about him on YouTube. Let's make some videos about Mark Goldbridge. So I did. I made a couple of videos on him and they got combined 200,000 views, which is all right, considering I was getting very little at the time. And at this point, I had about 20,000 subs and I decided to just overnight stop making FIFA videos. And I was like, I just can't do this anymore. And I had got to the point now where I'd heard that Mark Goldbridge had actually seen some of the videos that I'd made about him. And so I thought, well, let's send him an email and see if he wants to come on the channel for like an interview or chat or something. And I sent him an interview and within five minutes, he agreed, he accepted to come on. And I remember being really excited about this because he had a, you know, a decent following at the time, and obviously still does. And I ended up paying like 50 pounds for a new webcam just to interview him. And that was a big chunk of money for me at the time. That was a big thing to spend 50 quid on something for a video. I remember the interview went really well with Mark. It did like 20,000 views, which again for me at the time was fantastic. Uh, I remember thinking at the end of it, I've got to get some use out of this 50 quid webcam. That's a big chunk of money is that. I can't just not use it ever again. And so I thought, right, let's start an interview series. I've got James Lawrence Alcott who also makes football videos on. I've got Blue Van Man on there, Robbie Knox on there. And then off the back of the Robbie Knox interview, just so happened, pure coincidence, that Jack mate just so happened to see it down his timeline. He clicked on the interview, watched the entire thing, left a lovely comment underneath it, followed me back on Twitter and like gave me like a big compliment about how good the interview was. And I was like, oh, oh, yeah, he's, he's seen, he's seen. See the video, good. Now bear in mind, this was the first time that a big YouTuber had ever given me any sort of encouragement or ever said anything positive about what I've made. No one ever had ever sort of left a comment like that or reached out to me who was doing YouTube on that kind of level. And I remember a few months went by and I managed to actually get Jack on the interview series. And the interview went really well. We seemed to get on pretty well, had a good laugh and whatever. Thank you so much um, for coming on, first of all. I really appreciate it. Hey, it's been a pleasure. And then surprisingly, after the interview, he made like a community post on YouTube, basically saying to people, go check out this guy's channel, he makes some good stuff, go check out his videos. I was like, wow, okay, not only has he come on the channel, but he's actually, like, endorsed me, in a sense. And I remember at that point, my confidence in myself started to increase a lot, because for the first time, it was like, oh, wow, maybe I'm not delusional after all. You know, I've been making videos for, at this point, it would have been eight years, nine years consistently no breaks and i remember thinking wow okay I'm, I'm i'm maybe not delusional maybe there is something in this thing and off the back of this i managed to get an extra couple thousand subscribers which was fantastic i couldn't believe it and a few months later i then heard about this show called 90 day fiance and a guy called big ed and it was kind of doing the rounds on the internet and i was still reacting to videos at this point so i thought I'll react to it, let's do a video about it. It was like a few days later or something like that. Jack had seen the video and then he tweeted out like a clip of the video, basically saying how good it was and encouraging people to go watch it. And again, that was kind of like another big moment for me being like, okay, wow, someone's someone's really backing me here and actually I'm maybe making some good stuff. But then Jack went one step further and he decided to give me basically a shout out on his second channel. He made a video where he basically went through the most underrated YouTubers and on that list there was the likes of Robbie Knox, there was Zack and Jay, there was Max Fosh. And then at number one, this guy. <laughs> That's worked out well, hasn't it? Ironically, the one on the list with the least number of subscribers. Really fulfilled my potential, haven't I? Really done well. His channel is youtube.com forward slash thegameface.hd and honestly, one of the funniest guys I've watched, hands down. But he put me as number one on this list and I remember thinking, wow, okay, now he's giving me a shout out. And this video was in front of like over 100,000 people and I was like, this is crazy. My subscriber count jumped up 10,000 subscribers overnight. Suddenly my videos were getting five, ten thousand views each. 
I was like, this is crazy. This is more views than I was getting for the career mode stuff. And I actually like making these videos until that all stopped. Over the next year, the viewership on my videos started to sort of just gradually decrease. It was pretty clear that people had their favorite shows that I reacted to, and when I didn't react to those shows, they just didn't watch. And that kind of got me to a position where I was just struggling to pick up viewers and new subscribers and I was sort of getting a little bit bored of making the same videos as well, just reacting to stuff. I felt like I could do more and I sort of wanted to do more than just sit at a desk and chat about things. I always felt that, you know, would I actually want to do this in two years time, never mind ten years time, and that was a big thing for me. I always want to be focused on making things that I feel has a degree of longevity or I can see myself doing in ten years time, and I just didn't really feel that way about reaction videos. You know, I started to make some different videos on the channel, some more like challenge style videos, and the views were just dropping off the edge of a cliff. I mean, towards the end, it was like a thousand, one thousand two hundred views, which for a channel with 35,000 subs, it, it's not great. It's not. And with every video that I was uploading, I was losing subscribers. The only time I was gaining subscribers on the channel was when I didn't upload. Do you know how backwards that is? Do you know how demoralizing that is? Yeah, let's put loads of time to a video, upload it. Oh! lost subscribers. It really wasn't going well and something needed to change and after mulling over it for a few months I realised that the only way out was to start a new channel and my theory was that if I start fresh try and build a channel of subscribers that do actually want to watch my videos which always helps then maybe I can grow to not just the same point but maybe past the point that I got to before and perhaps even in a shorter period of time and eventually I decided to launch this new channel I launched it on April the 2nd 2022 I was supposed to launch it the day before but got slightly worried that people would think it was an April Fool's <laughs> just don't trust the intelligence of the internet I just don't I'm sorry and so I launched this new channel channel and just sort of spent the first six months trying to just find the format, find the style again, just start from scratch. And after six months, I landed on a concept and an idea which I thought could be this, this could be it. You know, this could be the breakthrough video. I'm going to put myself on a billboard. I bought this billboard to try and find a date. And things went a little bit mental. Good morning to Ed Chapman. He's in the papers today. Ed Chapman is 23. Good morning, Brian. Yeah, I think quite breakthrough. Look, the video did good, it, don't get me wrong, like it went out into the mainstream and I went up on TV, on radio, things kind of went pretty mad for a period of time, but it didn't really further the channel in any way. Like the video ended up doing maybe 2,000, 2,500 views, something like that, which was pretty good for me at the time, but it's not exactly groundbreaking, is it? But what it did help me out on is money. I wasn't making money from this YouTube channel at the time because you need, in order to make money from the channel, you need a thousand subscribers and 4,000 hours of watch time. Now I hit a thousand subs on the first day that I launched a new channel, so that was fine, but I just didn't have the 4,000 hours of watch time. It's so difficult to reach that. And so I wasn't making money on at the time, but thankfully as a result of the billboard thing, I then made like a thousand pounds from the various different media things that I did afterwards. Going into 2023, I had 1,600 subscribers. I wasn't monetized, running out of money, and it looked like it would be very difficult to make it to the end of the year while still making YouTube videos. And that's where I got the idea of the 10 day challenge. Now this ticks a lot of boxes for me. Not only would I actually make money doing the challenge, but it would increase the amount of videos that I made, which would increase my watch time, which would get me closer to being able to be monetized on YouTube so we could actually make some money from the videos again. Because the way that the watch time works is you have to get 4,000 hours of watch time in 12 months. Now bear in mind after about 11 months, I was on 2,000 hours of watch time. I needed to double the amount of watch time in one month. And obviously, that's where the 10 day challenge helped a lot. That series did really, really well for me. I was averaging like 2,000 viewers every single day for 10 days. I couldn't believe it. People were actually wanting to watch me riding a bike. I mean, I was literally just delivering stuff and it was te for 10 days straight as well. I couldn't believe it. I mean, I genuinely nearly didn't do the series because I thought, well, who's going to watch that? I mean, who, 10 days straight of just me on a bike delivering Cormas. No, who's watching that? Turns out a fair few people. And by the end of the 10 day challenge, I got to a point where I had 3,900 hours of watch time. I uploaded once more and hit the 4,000 hours. Hey! And just in time for the end of the year that I had to reach that threshold within, I'd hit the threshold. I'd managed to get myself monetized again in April 2023. But basically what I'd done is I'd made videos on YouTube and earned zero from them for an entire year. And so it was nice to now finally start to get a little bit of money from the videos. I mean, we're talking a five, five quid, ten quid. 
it's not going to change things that much. I mean, you can't even get into a nightclub for that on a weekend, can you? And that's what I was earning in a month. Now, even though the series had done pretty well, growth was still quite slow. I was only on 2,700 subs, and I remember just, like, slowly plugging away, like, trying to focus on making each video better than the last one. You know, I took the next flight to leave, I did a 24-hour live stream. You know, I was doing all sorts of different things. I went camping, and a few months later, I managed to get to the point where, oh, I've got... 3,700 subs. Then I stumbled across a video which would change my entire year. The video was titled, I tried food from Britain's dirtiest takeaways. A video which cost me about 60 pounds, which at the time was like a big chunk of money, a risk to sort of make that video. I was struggling to sort of, I, I couldn't really afford to spend 50 or 60 quid each week on a video. That's why I wasn't uploading weekly at the time. And that, that for me was a big chunk of money and a big risk because I hadn't really made much food content at that point. Anyway, I made the video. And it's on like 300,000 views at this point. I, don't, I still don't even know how. After two weeks, it was on 170,000 views. I couldn't believe it. Like my subscribers doubled. And not only that, people were going through my back catalogue and watching my older videos. And so I'd have like 2,000 people watching a video which had like one and a half thousand views, which then made YouTube's algorithm say, oh, this video's doing all right. Let's push it back out into the algorithm. And I had videos go from like 2,000 views to 40,000 views. 4,000 views to 80,000 views. My whole back catalogue was just exploding. I couldn't believe it. It wasn't even just one video. And before I knew it, things had just snowballed to the point where in July of 2023, I earned like 35 quid in that entire month from YouTube. 35 quid. Fast forward two months, August, and then the video went out at the end of August, and it started to do really well at the start of September. And by September, I was on a full-time wage. You know, imagine your monthly earnings going up, you know, 50-fold, 100-fold, that kind of thing, in the space of two months. Obviously, it started from a small point, but I couldn't believe it, how quickly it all happened. And to be honest with you, I still can't believe it at this point now. In the space of two months, I went from 4,000 subs to 27,000. And like I say, from 35 quid to a full-time wage. Now, four months after that initial spike in views, not only have I surpassed the amount of subscribers that we managed to get on the old channel, but now YouTube's my job. I earn a living from this after 12 years and more than 3,000 videos. I do now have to start paying taxes, which, you know, is an ideal, but swings and roundabouts, I. So, as self-indulgent as this video quite clearly is, I did want to do it just as kind of like a... A bit of background and a bit of an understanding, a bit of context for people to understand why 2023 was such a significant year for me. You know, to go from a point of making videos at 12 years old to finally it being my job at 24 is a pretty significant thing for me at least. And I kind of wanted to sort of express that to you and sort of help provide a bit of context. Because obviously not everyone has been subscribed for that long. And the best bit is... This isn't even a big channel. This channel's tiny. It's not even a medium-sized channel. This is a small channel still. And that's really exciting because there's loads of room for improvement. But, you know, starting the year out with genuine concerns about running out of money to get into the end of the year and being able to do this for a full-time living. It wasn't exactly what I expected to get to, to be honest with you. Things have been very, very slow, obviously, as I've, I've sort of demonstrated. And it did happen very quickly and it did happen out of the blue. And uh, yeah, I just want to say thank you so much for your support in 2023. I really, really do appreciate it. You've allowed me to do this thing as a job and I can't believe it. And hopefully you stick around, otherwise I am screwed. Don't really fancy having to get the bike back out either. It's got a flat tyre and I can't be arsed getting it pumped up. Anyway, thank you everybody. See you soon for another video. Cheers. Ugh.